Hi Booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to bring you part two of my book haul. I will link down below um, in the description box my part one, which was the nine books that I hauled in the month of September. Today in part two, we are looking at the 10 books that I hauled in the month of October. So let's get started and talk about these books, which I'm really excited for. Now, onto an author that I would really like to try. And I've heard lots of good things about their non-fiction work, but um, this one is their fictional book, and that is the author Ta-Nehisi Coates, and this is The Water Dancer. Love the simplicity of that cover and that blue. That blue is absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is um, billed as a historical fiction with some magical realism. And this is all about the decline of a Virginia plantation through the eyes of Hiram. Now, he is both a slave and the son of the plantation worker, and he has some mysterious power. I can't quite work out what it is yet, but I think this is a coming of age story and has really, really great reviews. So I'm, I'm expecting something a little bit unusual. I sense that it's literary fiction, so it's probably gonna need um, quite a lot of work and concentration, but yeah, really, really keen to try this author. Um, and this is a booktube favourite, 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Hanf. Um, I've been wanting to get my hands on this for ages. I knew I could get it through my library, but I just thought I want to own it because so many of you have mentioned that you really love this little book. And this is a series of letters um, between Helen Hanf, who was in... Um, uh, she was a writer in New York, and these letters are going between her and a bookseller, Marks & Co, a bookseller in London. And these are exchanged um, from 1949 to the 1960s. Now, I love reading about that post-war um, period. I think it's a really fascinating period of time. Um, and it's also the period of time when my parents all grew up. So I'm really fascinated in learning more about that era. But I've heard that lots of you say that this is very heartwarming. So yeah, very keen to get to this one. Now, another author that I want to try all her work is Anne Patchett. I read The Dutch House this year. I've also read Commonwealth and Bel Canto in the past too. And I managed to pick up State of Wonder by Anne Patchett. I love the writing in The Dutch House this year. So I'm really keen to explore more of that wonderful writing. Look at that cover. Look at that. And this is in beautiful condition as a secondhand book as well. Um, this is about a drug company, some scientists in a drug company who are researching a new drug in the Amazon. And I think we are going to look at the ramifications of this drug, but we are really going to look more at the scientists themselves. Because for me, otherwise, the drug part doesn't really appeal to me. But I think we actually focus more on the scientists and their loves and their losses. So yeah, very keen to get back to her writing. Now, back to nonfiction, and I have talked um, fondly in the past of a trilogy, A Year in Provence by Peter Mayer, which is all about his, is his memoirs of moving, abandoning his life in the UK with his wife to go and settle in the beautiful, wonderful area of Provence in France. Now, this is a follow-up. Um, this is Provence A to Z by Peter Mayo. Um, unfortunately, it's got this remains of this horrible sticker there, but I love on the spine. It's got that beautiful pattern, that, which is very Provence style. And this is a series of little essays talking about all things Provence and like the food and the lifestyle and the people. So apparently it's meant to be very charming, very witty. Um, I love his writing style. And oh, I really, really want to go back to Provence. I've only visited that area once when um, we only actually had two children at the time. Um, Ellie was literally, I think, four or five and Sam was a toddler. Not the ideal time to go and really appreciate <laughs> the beauty and the wine and the food of Provence. So I need to return. I need to return much years later and be able to sit in one of those wonderful cafes looking out on the landscape with a wonderful bottle of wine and the food and really soak up Provence. So I'm hoping in the meantime, while I wait for that tick in my bucket list, that this book might take me there. 
Now, another author who is becoming quite a favourite and I'm wanting to read all her books is Isabel Allende. I've just finished another one of hers and I really love her very unique writing style. And I've managed to pick up this one, Zorro. Now, this is um, based in late 18th century in South Carolina and we are following Diego de la Vega. He has a very aristocratic Spaniard father but he is also growing up witnessing the brutality um, and the injustice which are inflicted upon Native Americans. And he begins to have a huge burning desire to fight against injustice. So yeah, really interested in the take on this one. And again, look at that, love that cover, love that bright red and the gold, the gold um, font, as well as some like gold decorative edges. Yeah, very keen to get to more Allende work. Now, out of all these books I have hauled over these two months, um, this is the one that I'm a little bit more tentative about, but I know that it received a lot of bars a few years ago, so I thought I would give it a go, and that is The Girls by Emma Klein. This sticker is annoying me, I can't get it off, but this is dual timeline, and going between historical fiction, contemporary, the historical fiction being 1969. And in the contemporary, we are following Evie, who is looking back to 1969 when she was a teenager at 14 years old. And she got herself involved in almost like a cult-like group of girls led by a very dubious guy called Russell. And they did unusual things, which actually led to murder. So it's a little bit mysterious, fascinating, not sure if it's going to be my jam, but I'm going to give it a go at some point. Now on to an Australian book that has been on my radar for a long time and that is, look at this cover, Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. Now Trent Dalton is a very popular author in Australia and I have heard such good things about this. When I looked up the Goodreads rating, it is currently at 4.36 with over 60,000 ratings. And yeah, I can't believe I picked this up in second hand. It's almost brand new um, hardback version as well. So this is a coming of age story following Eli. It is set in Brisbane in Australia in 1983. Now, Eli has a tough life. He has lost his father. He has a mute brother, his mother is in jail and the drug scene is swirling around but then he finds true love and apparently this book can, takes you really by surprise for quite hard issues. Apparently you become really attached to Eli and are really rooting for him and it's all about true love and unlikely friendships and as I say coming of age and it's meant to be heartbreaking but exhilarating as well. I am really fascinated um, in this one and can't wait to tackle it at some point, um, hopefully early on in 2023. Now onto a book which is a booktube darling. I've heard so many people rave about this book over the last few years that finally I have my own copy of it. So hopefully I will tackle it soon. And that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. As you know, fantasy is not usually my thing. However, I kept hearing about Lainey Taylor. So a couple of years ago, I found a copy of Daughter of Smoke and Bone by her, which was the first in her trilogy. And I loved it. And because I've heard so many good things about this, um, I can't wait to give this one a go. All I know is really that it come, it follows Laszlo Strange, who is a war orphan and a junior librarian. So that is all I want to know. But yeah, really, really looking forward to reading more of Lainey Taylor and seeing what all the buzz has been about. Now onto my penultimate book and this book I picked up because of the FOMO book club which is a new book club um, started by Gemma from Gem of Books, Jack from Spread Book Joy and Alice from Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Um, I'll link their announcement videos down below and it's the FOMO book club because of all these books that you feel like you're missing out on that people, most people have read and you haven't. 
They've got this schedule for the whole year. And in January, February, the book is Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. Now, when they released all their books that they were going to read, I read most of them, but this was one I hadn't. And when I was recently in Australia, I managed to find this fantastic, well-kept secondhand copy. So this is historical fiction and quite gothic as Rebecca was by Daphne du Maurier as well. And we're focusing on this inn in the Cornwall area of um, the UK and we're following Mary Yellen. She goes to this tumble down inn and discovers that there are quite dark powers and villainous schemes going on within this inn. And she also meets this mysterious, handsome, um, stranger who I'm presuming may become a love interest but we will see so yeah very very keen to read this one with the girls in January February time so as I mentioned I was recently in Australia and I wanted to buy a book that was written by an Australian author but it's fair to say that books in Australia are pretty expensive brand new books so I did find a second-hand bookshop and um, had to be really careful on how much I could purchase because of weight in the suitcases but I did find this one A Kiss from Mr Fitzgerald by Natasha Lester who is a very popular historical fiction Australian writer. When I looked up on Goodreads, this book has a rating of 4.26, which is pretty impressive. And this is set in 1922 Manhattan and follows the gin, jazz, prosperity era. And we are following a main character of Evelyn Lockhart. Now she wants to become one of the first female doctors, but to do this, she's gonna to have to turn her back on her parents, her sister, her best friend. And to pursue this dream, she needs to come up with the funds and to support herself. So in order to do that, she then auditions for the cast of the Ziegfeld Follies on Broadway. So I think she's going to catapult herself into a different world completely within that era. But yeah, really looking forward to trying Natasha Lester's work. So there we go. They are the 10 books which I hauled in the month of October. I have to say, I am so excited to read a whole load of these. I would love to hear from you. Have you read any of these and what did you think of them? I love to connect with you. Please do comment down below and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching. Please take care of yourselves. Enjoy your reading and I will come to you with another video very soon. Bye.